it's that time of year again. The irises are in full bloom. Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. In this video, we are going to explore many different types of wonderful iris you can grow in the garden. Now, we are at the end of May, coming up into June, and the bearded iris, the Sibirican iris, are all coming out into flower and looking fantastic. But what about those irises that start earlier in the year? Here are a few of those little gems. Iris and Guincularis, also known as the Algerian iris. It grows right through Turkey, Greece, Syria. It is a brilliant little plant. Now its leaves can get up to around about 50 centimetres high and then it makes lovely big clumps of about 45 centimetres. This is a very dear plant to me because this came from my late mother's garden so I adore it. It is a plant that has changed its name. It used to be Iris stylosa, now it is Iris unguincularis. Because of where it comes from, and as you can see, this is in my gravel garden, it likes a hot, sunny site, poor soil, free draining, and it is absolutely happy. This happens to be nearly bang on south facing. It never gets anything other than the natural rain. So it is doing incredibly well. Now, the one thing I forgot to do in the winter was to cut off all of the older leaf. So what you can do is you can cut off all of this older leaf and then when it's coming into flower, you can see the beauty of everything that is there. It's got lots of lovely buds coming on here. Beautiful, huge, big iris flowers, lovely plant. Now, you can say that this is the last iris in the year to flower or the first one in the year to flower because it can start putting on its blooms sometime in November, right the way through December, January, February, maybe into March. My mother used to have large clumps of them and she would pick them for the house. And some years she would count how many blooms she got. And she got up to 450 blooms in one year that she had picked to put in a vase in the house. And then she also still had them outside flowering. So it was absolutely fantastic. And she grew hers up in North Yorkshire on free draining soil on a southerly site against a wall of a house. No problem at all. So if you struggle to get things to grow in hot, sunny, dry conditions, but you want something there, then you can't go far wrong than this beautiful iris. It's rhizomata, so it will just spread slightly. You can lift it and split it. That is usually done after it has finished flowering and then move it around and put it into different places. But really I need to be tidying this up, but it's coming into, and these flowers are just absolutely absolutely beautiful. The markings down the falls here are so lovely and it's a great great plant for free draining, full sun, iris and guincularis. There are many different types of irises and this is another of these beautiful perennial irises with a very delicate flower. Now on this one you've got these amazing falls with this lovely veining on them and then in the center you get the top petals which go up. It is a cracking iris. This is Iris Lactea. Now Iris Lactea will grow into a lovely big clump. It's an Asian variety. It's from areas of drier conditions. So this will grow in a gravel garden, be very happy in that sort of situation. And once it has finished flowering, the flowers sit at around about a foot, so about 30 centimeters. Then the leaf will go on up and it will go on up and it will get to around about two feet, maybe a little bit longer. And that will then give you a beautiful grass effect from a broad leaf which stays there and looks really good. Now where it is grown naturally these leaves are cut and used for weaving so that makes it of great use commercially well in an area where it's grown it means that they can make baskets and things like that so it's a useful 
papyrus from that point of view. People don't think about the fact that the leaves of something like this, they're really strong, they're really firm. So once they are used and woven into baskets, they're great, really useful. The iris itself, the flowers, will last about a month uh, because not only do you get the first flower, you get second flower here and it will put on more and it will grow out into a big mat. Now it is one of those irises where you can see here it's a little bit fanned in the way that it is growing. So it will always grow out and become a little bit of a dead centre in the middle. That's something that I tend to call the donut centre. But you can stop that in your garden from it being a problem by splitting it occasionally. I wouldn't do it too often because it's not the fastest growing of uh, irises. So perhaps every three years, maybe four years, and I wouldn't lift the whole thing. I'd literally just take something off the side, leave the main plant in situ. It will regenerate and then you can start the new plant off in another area. So the key things are full sun, to part shade but more sun if possible and free draining soil is what it really loves. So this is Iris Lactea. I have to say that although the bearded irises are big and bold and they have these amazing colours and the range, oh my goodness me, there are so many different colours out there, they are not actually my favourites. I prefer the slightly smaller, slightly more elegant, longer stemmed, smaller flowers but lovely and with this dark green leaf which stays looking good as the Sibirican iris does. But let's just have a look at the weird and wonderful colours that you can get within the Beardis iris range. Now I've only brought a selection here because there are just so many out there you could just keep on going and it's really up to you and your colour palette as to which you prefer. Some are taller, some are slightly shorter. And what you have to remember is that these flowers are large and with these large petals they are delicate. So when we get heavy rainstorms or a bit of wind, you can get damage on the actual flowers. The flowers don't last that long either, but when they are out, they give a pizzazz and they're really fine. This particular variety here, which is a sort of ginger colour all the way over, this one is carnival time. Really beautiful fall here and lovely lining on there. A lovely tongue inside here, which is also a similar orangey cinnamon colour. And then this top knot on here. Now you have the first flowers and then you get another lot coming afterwards. And sometimes you can have up to five or six flowers on each of these. Carnival time is not that tall probably going up to two feet 60 centimeters and then as with the bearded iris you get this big broad leaf at the base and you have the rhizome that is in at the bottom here and they will lift themselves out of the ground so that the rhizome will sit on the surface you do not necessarily have to plant them right on the top you can submerge them a little bit they will push themselves up so don't worry about that Occasionally you get a little bit of leaf spot and I have to say in this wet year that we have had the leaf spot is a little bit bad. We tend to just cut a little bit off because it produces so much leaf and then when they have finished cut the flower spikes down, leave the leaf there to feed the rest of the plant and then later on give them that fan type cut over the leaf here just to keep it tidy. So this beautiful one is carnival time. And staying in a similar sort of orangey colour, we go on to this one, which is Kent Pride. Now Kent Pride is very easy to tell when it's younger because the leaf has got this amazing purple marking all the way up through here. And then when it comes into flower, this actually puts on a huge amount of flower and you get this burgundy colour on the 
falls here and a lovely marking very yellow and then the beard is much more yellow in there well the tongue sorry much more yellow within there and then a burgundy top you can see on this one it's got one two three lots here more buds to come so this is going to last for quite a long time quite a bit taller than the carnival time up to three feet with this one you may need to make sure and hold this it may need some support and the reason for that is these flowers individually actually quite heavy Heavy. and when you're a lot there it can fall forward so just be aware watch them if it's windy or it's wet make sure that there is some support for the flowers themselves so that one is Kent pride then my particular favorite is this beautiful old variety and this one is Jane Phillips now Jane Phillips is basically one tone it's a beautiful soft blue and then the beard or tongue here is whitey cream and the perfume from this particular variety is absolutely adorable oh yes it's gorgeous it's really really good so this is one that i really love so a new flower is slightly darker in tone to an older flower so they start off with a slightly more blue and then go into this paler blue as they start to go over I love Jane Phillips. I think it's a really good old variety. It's reliable and it keeps going really well and the perfume is wonderful. It's sort of a limey vanilla. And then another old variety staying with the sort of blue purple tones is this one and this one is Braithwaite and Braithwaite is a good old form and this is one of the start of the breeding whereby they had two different colours. So your fall petals here are a gorgeous deep purple violet and then the top ones are a lilac and then the um, beard or tongue in the center there is yellow so they all vary depending on what they are and what you want this one is a mid-height one they all are slightly different seasons although this year everything seems to have come into flower all at the same time so even though they may be said to be early late or middle season we seem to have had them all flowering at the same time and that's just due to the year that we have had but cracking colors really good range there are yellows there are whites there are pinks there are really frilly petaled ones all sorts of different forms out there it's whatever takes your fancy when it comes to the bearded irises but they all prefer a reasonable soil and a sunny site and somewhere where it is relatively free draining and that is for all of the bearded iris series now Go on to my favourites and the reason why I like these is because the foliage once the flowers have finished looks wonderful. It looks as though you've got another grass-like plant there. So this is what is known as a graminoid. The foliage looks like grass. It's, a, it's going up and it stays there. It looks tidy. It doesn't die back down. This particular variety here of Sibirica, this one is called Silver Edge. Beautiful blue violet flowers and then all the way around the edge of these falls is a white line and that's what gives it its name and then wonderful markings in the center and again lots of flowers so the flowers actually last for a lot longer on the Sibirican iris than they do on the bearded irises and once you've got a reasonably good sized clump you will get masses of flower all sitting through there so this one silver edge is a mid height one somewhere around about two to two and a half feet in height the foliage sits at about two feet and then it makes decent clumps at the base now Sibirican irises are really quite happy in most conditions so you can push them a little bit shady you can push them sunnier and they will tolerate most soil types so that makes them probably just a little bit easier to grow so you go from something which is this sort of blue to something which is a pink tone and this one is sparkling rose now we've had some heavy rainfall just recently and it has damaged some of these petals but you get the idea of the sort of rose color that this is it's not a bright pink but it is a pink lilac and it is really good and look at the amount of foliage that there is here masses of buds still to come it's a really good form I like sparkling rose 
Again, it's probably not one of your tallest, between two and two and a half feet in height, but a really good pink color to it. So that is that one. Let's stay with some of the blue ones. And this one is Tropic Night. Now this again has got really good foliage here, but look at these wonderful wiry stems. And then you get these falls. So it's a slightly smaller flower, but it's very much hanging falls, upright top knots, and it has gorgeous markings on these falls. Tropic Night is a good form. It is an older one of the breeding that has been made on the Iris Sibiricas. And it's a classy plant. It's a mid-height one, somewhere between two and a half and three feet tall. So that is uh, 75 to 90 centimeters in height, and then a good clump former, Tropic Night. Now, if you want something really dark and just a little bit taller, then Caesar's brother is fantastic. This again has got wiry stems and wherever there are the joints on the stem, you get this lovely dark piece of uh, foliage here, which is the shield that allows it to go up. And sometimes there are more buds coming out of there. And then you get up to these incredible, beautiful purple, uh, flowers which are at the top. They're quite close together so you don't see each individual flower itself but the amount of colour that you get and they are so much further above their foliage which I think is beautiful as well. So foliage stays down here and then you get these dancing heads just higher up. So they do look fantastic in the herbaceous border or the shrub border. So this one is Caesar's brother. And then if you're wanting a white form or nearly white form, then there is this one, white swirl. Now white swirl is really quite cream in its buds. And then as it opens up, the reverse is slightly creamy yellow and they open up with these beautiful falls here and the lovely creamy white at the top. And they produce a lot of flower as well. So this again is a taller form. So these taller ones, you're talking about three feet, 90 centimeters in height. That's a really good size. It's a good size for the middle of the border. You can go as far as putting them in the front of the border because at the end of the day, once the flowers are finished, the foliage is only sitting at around about 18 inches or 45 centimeters so that's really up to you or you have the odd one at the front and the odd one at the back and they will just make a wonderful mixture of colors going through and I personally just adore the Sibirican irises so if I was to group these ones I think I would have them with this style of grouping so that you've got a wonderful color in there. I would then have beautiful herbaceous going through as well. Things like nepetas or hardy geraniums, that type of thing. And then you get this wonderful mix. Now, in a small space, you can do a mixture of color. If you don't want a mixture and a tapestry, then you go for one variety and have one good variety all the time. But all the, you know, these irises are going to look great right the way through the early summer and they are easy to divide. But of course, with these Sibirican irises, you're gonna get that lovely foliage staying there, looking good, giving you structure and helping fill out your borders. With the bearded irises, they're coming up, they're looking good. Foliage will stay there for a little bit of time and then it starts to die back down. So of the two, I think you get more out of the Sibirican irises, but if you want to go bold and brash and brassy, then the bearded irises are for you. But I tend to go for these ones, I have to say. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video of mine, YouTube thinks this one is perfect for you.